Welcome RTA Champions. This is the RTA Champion and in today's video we are continuing with our masterclass training in Power Automate Desktop. Now in today's video we are going to understand how we can work with flows when they start getting big. So let's say we start creating a, a flow that is going to be very big with many different actions, complicated actions, sending emails, extracting data. So it would look a mess if we had to uh, put all of our actions in one single window. So that's why we have uh, we have something that is called control flow. Control flow allows us to create uh, and manage our flow. Control flow is just a uh, group of different things, such as, for example, creating subflows, uh, exception handling, uh, adding nodes, uh, using labels to better control our flow. All right, so let's see how this works in practice. Let's go into the subflows. So what are subflows? This is our main flow. Our main flow is the one that is triggered by Power Automate Desktop when we execute our process. Now, to simplify our main flow, we create subflows so that we can split our logic into different smaller components. All right, let's see how subflows work. So to create a new subflow, all we have to do is just add a new subflow and create the name of that subflow. I have already created three, there is no need to create any more. And then to run a subflow, all we have to do is add a connection to run a subflow. This is all pretty simple, but what I want to show you is how we can pass information back and forth from a subflow. So a subflow is going to uh, do a certain set of actions and then it's going to get that information and pass it back to us. So let's see how this uh, let's see how this works uh, with this subflow subflow two. So in this subflow we have a uh, display message. This display message is getting a variable that is coming in input. How do we set that variable? We set it in here. In the variables we added a new input variable and we gave it a default value of the variable that is coming from the other input. From the, from the main flow. So that is for the input, and then for the output, it is quite a similar uh, approach. We will go into the output, we will put the name of the variable, we don't need to put the value because the value is just created inside of the process, and we would put it the name that we want to call them inside of our main process. All right, so let's see how this works. So I have created here a very, uh, a very simple display message that is just getting a variable current date time. The current date time is set here and it's created in, inside of this variable. Now, if you've been watching my masterclass videos, you will see in the previous videos all about variables. So if you don't know much about variables, make sure to check out the previous videos I did about variables because it covers extensively and in details all kinds of different variables that Power Automate has. All right, so uh, let's run this and see what happens. Our process should get the current date and time, open the subflow. It is displaying this message of the date and time. And we are paying attention in subflow 2. The button was pressed OK. And then we stop here at this label stop. Now let's continue and let's go into subflow 1. Subflow 1 is pretty much a similar thing with display the uh, we display a message but we just don't display a message we also only get the day of the week so is it monday is it sunday what day is it and after that we uh, add one to uh, we add one to our date so that we have a date in the future and we store this inside of the variable that we call result date now result date then we get it outside of our subflow and we pass it back here in our main flow and we display it inside of our message. What we do then is we've inserted two things that are called a label and a go to. So this is something that allows Power Automate to jump from one place to another. So once our flow is going to hit the go to, it is going to jump automatically to the label. So once again, the go to is going to make it jump automatically, and this is going to create an infinite loop. So, uh, 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 this is not what you should be doing, but what I want to demonstrate is how you can use the go to and the label to jump to different parts of your process. So, in this case, I could, instead of jumping here, I could jump directly to uh, somewhere else inside of my process. All right, so let's 
trigger this and let's see what happens. I will put a, uh, a breakpoint. So uh, one thing that we haven't seen is how to add breakpoints. If we click right next to the uh, number of in Power Automate, we're going to create a breakpoint. The breakpoint is going to allow us to stop our flow at that point. But more on that in the next training where we're going to see exception handling. So uh, the breakpoint is going to stop here. So let's run this process and see what happens. All right, we are going to get the date. We have pop-up, the first pop-up that has opened. We are in subflow two. Now we're running subflow one. We got another pop-up and it's telling us it's Tuesday. So now we're going to add one and we can see here that the date is changed one day in the future. Now we are going to run this again and we're going to get Wednesday, which is uh, not Tuesday because here it is Tuesday and here we got the value uh, of the result date and the day of the week. So just let's stop this for one second. It is unnecessary that it continues. Let's go to my to the main and let's open this. And this is the result date and day of the week. The result date is the date that is coming back, the day that is coming back. All right, so let's just uh, stop a little bit once more and just see what the go-to and label do. So the go -to, uh, and you can create as many labels as you do, and to do that, you just add them from the, uh, from the actions pane. So I can add another label here, and I can call this label, uh, well, maybe not start, I can call it uh, super, super start. And the, uh, and then when I go to the go to, I can choose which label I would want to jump to automatically. So in this case, I would just jump automatically to this one, and this would be ignored. One last thing that you should take away from this video is comments. So uh, it is going to get a little bit messy in here. So the logic that I am doing, I would like to make a couple of notes for myself. So I can just create a comment and insert it anywhere inside of the process. And this will allow me to uh, keep track of the different things that I'm, uh, that I'm working on. So let's just recap once more of everything that we saw. We saw how to create subflows, how to pass data from one subflow to another, to the main, uh, to the main back and forward. We saw how to uh, run some flows. We saw how to use the go to and the label. We saw how to work, stop the flow and comments. I have a question for you before you go. How many subflows can you create in one of your processes? And the answers are one, obviously not, three, five, unlimited. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next masterclass training. Have a great day.